Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. Alright, what's up guys? Got a video here today for you on Whirlwind, the Barbarian skill. And this is going to be for the expansion, Lord of Destruction. The mechanics are a little different in Classic D2. Uh, but anyways, in Lord of Destruction, Whirlwind has some interesting and unique properties that you may not be aware of. They're a little unintuitive, so I wanted to kind of break them down for you. Um, so, the first thing to be aware of is that Whirlwind operates on uh, its own sort of breakpoint calculator, and how this works is it's affected by your weapon speed, and this is not to be confused with attack speed because external and you know items that modify attack speed, auras, the cold or frozen status, these do not actually impact your attack speed when it comes to Whirlwind because Whirlwind is based solely off of your weapon speed. So all the different attack speed modifiers or debuffs that may be impacting your character do not matter for the game when it checks uh, for hit frames on Whirlwind. And at the startup of Whirlwind you get two free hit checks and these occur at the 4th and 8th frames and remember the game runs at 25 frames per second. After those two free hit checks, which if you're using a very slow weapon and you have uh, low, low attack speed uh, inherent on the weapon, doing shorter whirlwinds will increase your damage because you will be getting more of those free hit checks and I'll cover that a little bit more later. So after that, um, the frame checkpoints or hit checks are calculated differently for one-handed weapons and two-handed weapons. And two-handed swords are treated as one-handed weapons in this calculation, regardless of whether or not you're using them in one or two hands. And I'll post a link to a um, calculator to determine this for you because it's a little complicated. It's based off the uh, subtracting the weapon's increased attack speed to its base weapon speed and then finding where that uh, falls in, a ta in this table. Um, <clears throat> for one-handed weapons, uh, there's hit checks between after frame 8 at 12, 10, 8, 6, and 4. And the uh, breakpoints for one-handed weapons are 15, 10, negative 10, and negative 34, but again, you kind of need a calculator to get those numbers. On two-handed weapons, the um, hit frame checks after frame 8 are 14, 12, 10, 8, 6, and 4, and the breakpoints for that are 15, 0, 10, or sorry, 15, 0, negative 10, negative 30, and negative 60. So those are the uh, most important things when it comes to Whirlwind. And I would even suggest that you don't necessarily need cannot be frozen um, on an item for a Whirlwind Barbarian because it's not really being frozen isn't going to decrease your damage output. It's just going to make your Whirlwind travel slower. Um, so in some situations this can be good, in other situations it can be bad. Also, if you're frozen and you're in a sticky situation, you can um, just instantly leap out and it, it doesn't affect your leap speed or the casting speed really. Some other things to be aware of with Whirlwind is after you cast it, um, you, you cannot actually die until the Whirlwind animation ends. So if you're someone playing in hardcore and your health drops to zero and the whirlwind animation hasn't ended, you could save and exit the game and save your character. Uh, your character will not be dead. Um, you could also do that in softcore if you just don't want to lose the experience. 
Um, you also cannot use any potions while you're whirlwinding, so be aware of this. If you do a really long whirlwind through a group of enemies, um, you will not be able to use any uh, healing potions or rejuve potions, so it can be risky depending on the situation. Uh, the weapon range also, uh, different weapons have different ranges with uh, spears and pole arms having the longest. Um, this will increase the AoE of your whirlwind and you'll be able to hit more enemies um, from a farther distance. Also, when you cast Whirlwind, you will move in as straight of a line as possible to end where you clicked, and be careful not to click on enemies if you can avoid it, because sometimes if you click on an enemy, um, one, you'll do less damage because usually your Whirlwind will end in front of them. You kind of want to Whirlwind behind them, but also if it's a fast enemy, or even if they're just far enough away, and they start running away, your character will continue to pursue them. So you could potentially whirlwind across an entire map and be stuck in the animation, which uh, could lead to your character dying. And so those are the main things uh, to be aware of with whirlwind. Um, a couple, one other thing is that uh, it does not work with on attack items on striking or when you kill an enemy. Those item properties will not work, however it will work with crushing blow, it will work with critical and deadly strike, uh, and it will work with life leech and mana leech, which having life leech and mana leech is very important. Um, it, it will It's pretty much uh, how you will sustain yourself while you're whirlwinding since you do not have access to uh, potions while you are using whirlwind. And the, the hits while you are whirlwinding are subject to your attack rating. And so that's also something you will need to make sure that you have. And now the, what I want to show you, um, just real quick, is the free hits that you get um, on the 4th and 8th frames. Uh, so you can, you can see here you get... Um, almost one or two instant attacks. Let me find some enemies with a little more HP here. Um, so you can see when I go on these longer whirlwinds, the number of hits I get after the first two really slows down quite a bit. However, if you do what's called the Triangle of Death, and that's going to be kind of a just a couple really short whirlwinds. Oh, here's Shank, he's trying to run away. So if you just do some uh, short whirlwinds, you know, kind of in a triangle pattern, that is going to do the most damage for uh, if you have a slower weapon. Once you start hitting those higher breakpoints, it becomes less and less uh, a benefit to you and longer whirlwinds will be more mana efficient um, especially when it gets to the higher levels and it's costing you 25 per cast mine's still kind of a lower level just to keep the uh, mana cost down for me right now but uh, I hope this helps you guys out um, and answers any questions or uncertainties you may have on whirlwind the mechanics are a little different um, for the game because uh, Typically you would think that increased attack speed would, and, and modifiers to your attack speed would affect Whirlwind, but it actually d has no impact on it. So this is both a good and, and a bad thing. Um, mainly a good thing, I think, because once you're aware of that, it kind of opens up some different gearing options you may not think you need, um, like a Raven Frost as badly as some would have you believe. Definitely on a frenzy barb or you know other barbarian builds, it's necessary. But for whirlwind, you can definitely play around that, and it opens up some different gearing options for you. So, thanks for listening, guys. Thanks for watching, and remember to give them the D.